Welcome to the Crypto Confident Podcast for Grown Women with Ansela. Crypto does not have to be complicated. We keep the tech talk to a minimum. Grown women, let's talk about crypto. Today's episode is brought to you by the Crypto Confidence Collection, tools to help you reach your crypto goals available on Amazon. And we're so excited today to have our special guest, Dr. Tammy Francis, who is doing amazing things in the cryptocurrency and blockchain space. Let's talk to her and see what she's up to. Dr. Tammy, thank you so much for being here. How are you today? I am great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and to see you again. Oh my goodness, we've actually got to meet in real life recently. So this is this is nice. Thank you. It is. It's really nice. And it's so true. Just a quick backstory. Dr. Tammy and I connected on LinkedIn. Who knows when? Y'all know how that goes. <laughs> yes. And finally met in person, what, two months ago? Yeah, June, last month. Wow. Was that June? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's been a minute though. Time <laughs> is just going so fast, right? <laughs> so we got to meet in consensus and we had to break bread at a, a wonderful event, you know, outside of consensus, which was a lot of fun. And so I had to have Dr. Tammy on because again, we want to celebrate women um, of a certain age, <laughs> especially of a certain complexion. <laughs> <laughs> who are actually active in the crypto and blockchain space. So I know that you do a lot, Dr. Tammy. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Okay. She said a little bit, y'all. So I want to work on this. So she <laughs> so she give me side eye. Y'all know it's No, okay. no, no. We're still you, cool. Y'all talking about we're still cool. You so. talk as long as you want, Dr. Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So I'm an educator, but I'm also a business strategist. I have been an educator in K-12 and higher ed for over 20 years. And then one day I decided, you know, I'm going to start a business. I had been doing consulting work in that space for a while, and I decided to start a business. And so now I'm a business strategist. I am the founder and CEO of Catalyst for Change Global, where I help entrepreneurs, leaders, business startups, and I'm particularly passionate about blockchain startups. Um, to with purpose field, purpose driven, mm -hmm. uh, creative business solutions to build, grow, and scale their businesses, and so that's what I do. Um, that's that's what I do primarily. Although, like she said, I do so many other things. That I'm also a professor with Altesh University, where I, which is an online uh, campus that offers blockchain programs and studies. So I do that, and I also help with another council where I help certify those who want to be registered blockchain professionals and want to just be competitive in the blockchain industry. I also do some of those things, and, and I'm a speaker. So I speak on future of work, future of business, and of course, business strategy. And I always refer to myself as a business mindset strategy, because if you look at any of my work, you'd be like, oh, she does all this positive talk and this positive things, um, because... Um, I think everything starts with the mind and, you know, you have to get your thinking right so you can do those other things that you want to do and re achieve the goals you want to achieve. So I always say, I am Dr. Tammy, you strategist, educator, author, and speaker. I help you move in the direction of more and prepare for what's next. Oh, that is lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm going to take advantage of what you just said about mindset to segue real quickly into this is what we're doing starting tomorrow. No, starting tonight, July 19th. I'm sorry, starting tonight at 9 p.m., we have the Abundance Mindset Challenge. And that is something that as a crypto confidence coach, something I'm constantly faced with helping people to have the right mindset to get into this crypto game. So we're definitely on the same page with that. Now, I see you on LinkedIn all the time. And one thing that's so intriguing is you do so much international work. So could you tell us how you got into that space specifically? Because I will say, I don't know if I'm right, but it seems like you do more outside of the U.S. than you do in the U.S. You're right. Um, so it's really, it's really interesting. interesting. 
Uh-oh, I'm getting feedback. No, I'm, I'm not hearing it. Okay. But it's really interesting that um, that you asked that because I actually started, you know, my whole mission with Catalyst for Change Global. When I even chose the name for global as opposed to international, a lot of people had international in their business names. And I put, I selected global for, for a reason because international usually means just a few countries, right. you know, one or two. And I thought, no, it's not big enough for me. You know, I'm a mindset person. And, and if you look at my platform, everything that I talk about is about more and manifesting more, reaping more. So everything is about more. So I was thinking that's not large enough. So let me move to global. Right. And so that's always been the mission. And so I initially um, just started working when I started my business strategy and my and mastermind groups and helping people who just wanted to clarify their vision and create an action plan and really turn their dreams into reality by really creating these actionable steps. I was working with a lot of the women from the UK and it actually started there. And then of course, you know, when you're on social media, when you start really focusing on, and my focus was on visibility initially. So that's when I started live streaming and doing all that. Well, of course, when you're live streaming, you get this global audience. Well, once I moved into the blockchain space last year, then it blew up, right? Then it just magnified because I started doing things like I was talking about the International Council of Registered Blockchain Professionals, um, i BP, which we shortened for i BP. Um, we st I started doing work for them and then we started having partners and collaborating. And then people started seeing what I was doing in the blockchain space. And as I did that, then I started getting clients from different places. And so, and even helping with hackathons. So one of the most recent has been a hackathon with the Africa Blockchain Institute, where I help with startups, blockchain startups who are in the hackathon program, taking them from ideation all the way to market and, and looking at the business side because I was the business mentor. They had a tech mentor because I'm a non-tech person in this tech world and I love it um and so, I, so it really expanded it really grew um and so now I just I work with people all over the world and have collaborations with people and most of them are on the the continent of Africa and so I work with several countries in several countries there and you know but I still have people in the UK I still have people you know in in Asia so I you know I still have people all over you know and it's, it's really been amazing. I'm really excited. And like you say, yes, I do. Which is interesting that we're talking about crypto because if you're going to be global, you have to know about crypto and it helps with transacting business if, you're, if you know a little bit about crypto. Yes, very true. Like, yes, very <laughs> I'm true. I'm trying to say that all <laughs> decoded. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> exactly, that is so true. So that's a great point. If you're doing any kind of international business transactions, crypto is definitely a place to go. And also one of the things I focus on is just helping a lot of women who are a bit older, who feel a little intimidated because of the tech speak and not seeing people who look like them representing the space. So what would you say if someone were hesitant about getting involved in crypto and trying to understand blockchain and things like that? What, what would the advice be from you? The advice would be to find a mentor, um, I think. And so what you're doing is amazing in the space you're creating. It may creates, opens up an amazing space. I am all about cocoon experiences and creating ex uh, experiences that are centered around safe spaces and a place where transformation can happen. And so I think that that's one, just to get a mentor. That's what I did. I had a mentor, he really helped me navigate this space and um, you know just guide me through the different things that, whether it was crypto or blockchain, um, and just making sure that I was aware of the different opportunities. And if I had a question, I could go and ask that question. And the, clar the clarity came from just having a mentor, someone you can talk to. And I think the other thing is, you know, don't think about um, all that you're hearing in the media. Don't think about and take all of that in. Um, just remember to start where you are and, just one step at a time. Like you don't need to know all of it right now. We're early in this game. So you have a, a little time. So I want you to get started right now, but you don't have to rush. Like take your time. That way you can get comfortable and confident in each at each step, wherever you are. And just, you know, follow Ansela. <laughs> <laughs> That's the 
point right there, Dr. So Devin. Five, <laughs> got you, you know, but yeah, I mean, really a mentor was really key for me. And then just not trying, as my parents would say, keep up with the Joneses, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, not try to keep up with everyone else and compare myself to someone else's journey and how fast they learned something about the industry. Because you may get something faster than someone else um, mm -hmm. and vice versa. So you can't compare anyone's journey. So you just got to, you know, embrace your own and just take it one step at a time. Absolutely. That's great advice. Excellent advice, actually. Um, another thing I was thinking about, because I know you're more into um, the blockchain and business, what do you think about these blockchain careers? It seems like everyone's looking for developers and blockchain experts. Do you think that's something that um, we women over 40 can look into? You think it's something within our grasp or should we just encourage our children to do it? <laughs> no. It's within all our grabs, no matter what age you are, you know, and just in case you have some that are a little younger, like trying to trying to get ahead of the curve or those, you know, that you're on that are part of your audience, no matter what age, this is a great time to get into it. And when people think about blockchain, they typically think about developers and coders. And like I told y'all, I'm a non-tech person in this tech world. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm also one that's really about, um, you know, just making sure that whatever you do is aligned with your purpose. And in order to do that, I want you to know, like, there are so many use cases and, and ways that you can connect blockchain technology, <laughs> cryptocurrency to what you're currently doing. And so that's the thing that I encourage folks to do is really, in women, to do is to really, you know, start where you are. What are you really passionate about? What do you really want to do? Now, if this is a time where you want to pivot, it's a great time to do that. If you want to reskill and upskill, it's a great time to do that. However, if you like what you're doing, you just start researching, you know, doing a simple Google search or whatever, researching how is blockchain technology or cryptocurrency used in your particular industry. And then one, it may just be getting training and learning. And just so you have that to add to your resume. Um, or I'm um, in higher ed, so we have CVs, you know, whatever that is. And then, you know, or it may be a complete shift. And so I, I don't want, you know, because I think a lot of us that are non-tech, we get afraid because we hear all oh, this, developers, we think we got to learn all the Python and Solidity and all these right. other things. And that's not necessarily the, the so, because in this space, they need people who know business. Right. They need, uh -huh. they're, right? they're tech, but they don't mean I know the business. So they need someone uh -huh. that knows the business. They need someone who maybe is a program manager. They may need someone who's a writer, like a content writer. Mm -hmm. And so like there's so many things that you can do and so many use cases, no matter if you're in retail, health, um, health care, whatever you're in education, there is a use case. And it's just a matter of doing your research and seeing how does blockchain technology or cryptocurrency connect to what you're doing and how would it be, How what are some of the pilots that are happening and how are they implementing it right now? Because you may find, ooh, you may find something you're interested in and then just, just read about it, learn about it and then That's, ask your mentor. <laughs> <laughs> that is great advice. You're absolutely right. We automatically go to developers, but mm -hmm. these are businesses that need all kinds of support. So mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense. Thanks for that. And what is your take or how deeply are you involved in NFTs and the metaverse? Is that something that's getting a lot of your attention right now or? It is, it's getting more. I will say that I am not um, a mentor. I haven't mentored or created. Um, an NFT. However, I have received some. I do. I have, you know, read about it. I know how they work. I, I do talk about it. Um, and the metaverse, I have been in different. Um, I would say, uh, I don't, the metaverse, my, my take is it hasn't been created yet, but there okay. are iterations of it. There are mm -hmm. Aspects of it that are now coming together. You have the VR, you have the AR, augmented reality. You have all of those things that are that are part of a metaverse that you can see. And you can there are some out there, you know, that are more like gaming platforms that you can mm -hmm. kind of go in and kind of see what it's evolving to. Because I always think of the metaverse as an experience. Mm -hmm. NFTs is more the ownership and when the ownership. So like I know that part of it. 
I know mm-hmm. how to implement NFTs into your business I and do. what the meta, how the metaverse may play into your business and mm-hmm. whatever you want to do in the future. Um, but I will say, like, I don't have my own metaverse. I'll be transparent. I don't I haven't minted an NFT, but mm-hmm. I do talk about it. I do talk about it as it relates to business. And so I'm even doing... Um, for my local black chamber here in my city. Um, that's one of the series I've been doing is the future of business where we've been talking about the cryptocurrency, blockchain, NFTs, the metaverse, web three, all of that um, as it relates to business. So that's kind of my playground and that's where I kind of stay in my lane. Right. <laughs> well, that's good to know though, because I do, I do encourage my business owner community members to understand why they should accept cryptocurrency, even if it just means putting up a QR code, you know, right, right. just start right. with that. So when yeah, I get yes. a little deeper into that, I'm going to see if you're available to come give us some insight on that whole situation. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> so, and I brought up that issue about the metaverse because August 2022 Time Magazine mm-hmm. covers I the, saw it. the Wow, you know, <laughs> if people don't see the need to understand this stuff and at least dip their baby toe in, yes, <laughs> at least get started. Get exactly. started with the understanding. So. And that's a good place to start, right? Because I I you know that article when I looked at it, it was basically it was from the, the place like how is this going to change what you're mm-hmm. doing? And so I think that's a good place to start. So you can start thinking about, and I think it's really, you know, we always talk about this thinking outside the box or getting rid of the box. I think that those type of articles really start getting you to think about it. So if you just, you know, you just notice that and pick it up or, you know, now I think it's online where you can just kind of click on it. You can, you know, you can check it out and just see what it's saying. And it gives a little statistics about the demand and all of that. So I think that is start, I think that helps us to start really thinking about like, hmm. This is going to be something. And where where am I in this? How does this align with what I'm doing? Exactly. And of course, like with everything else, you want to go where everyone's headed and get there first. So (laughs) hurry up and get there first so that you can stake your claim on what's available to be claimed, right? (laughs) Exactly. Yes. Awesome. This has been fantastic. I'm going to ask you one last question because this is what's on everyone's mind today. The market (laughs) being what it is for the past (laughs) months. What do you think is going to happen? You think we're going to see some improvement? We just, we just need to ride it out. What do you foresee in the next month or two? That's a great question. And um, because it's been the all the buzz, right? Everybody's like, you know, I have those that are really nervous and concerned. And then there's people like me. So you asked, how am I? I am just riding this out. I really think so. I, I think it's all about, you know, folks zooming out. Right. When you look at a cryptocurrency, one, look at your portfolio. It should be diverse. Mm-hmm. And then look at that portfolio and see what types of cryptocurrency you have in there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just stay abreast on their project. Make sure it's something that aligns with you, your values and what you like and mm-hmm. that you still support that. Because then you can make adjustments there if necessary. But those that you are, that you got into initially and you're thinking this, I'm, I'm with this. This is, this, is, this is the one I'm going to stick with because mm-hmm. I have my, my few, right? Um, then it's just about zooming out, looking at it and look at their performance over time and know that what's happening right now has happened before. And so it's and so and just and just look at the bigger picture and not just right now. And, you know, as long as you are holding what you have, you haven't lost anything. You haven't lost anything. So just kind of hold. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, watch it, be aware, like, don't go in it. Like when we got into this, we know cryptocurrency, the volatility of cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. So we know that. And so you're going to watch it. That's, you know, it's your money. You're going to watch it. You don't have to watch it every day, but, you know, but you pay attention, but you also, you know, just hold. And because I do believe, you asked, what did I think? I believe <laughs> that it, that it's going to, it's going to go back up. It's going to be, you know, it's going to do its thing. Mm-hmm. and keep that same performance over time and that upper performance, even though there's some down moments. And so right now I just concerned, I just always encourage people to hold. And then of course it's on sale. So DCA, <laughs> what DCA means dollar cost average okay. and just dollar cost average, like whatever that is for you. And if you dollar cost average a little less because you're nervous, because it's all about your, your risk tolerance. Mm-hmm. And so if you want a dollar cost average a little less, that's fine. But I encourage you to still 
just just keep that same rhythm. Like if it's five dollars a, a week or twenty dollars a month or whatever your your thing is, just keep doing that. And that's what dollar cost averages. Just that this you, whatever your the time that you decide a month a, a quarter whatever it is you're putting into it, just do it and just do it consistently because during this time it's a great time to add to your portfolio. So when it does go back up which, you know, that's my, that's my projection <laughs> is that you'll, you'll, you've, you've added a little more, you know, so just hang in there. Don't you hang in there. Yeah. Yes. And what you said is so true. As long as you're holding, you haven't lost anything. I had the chance to present to a group of women online. And one of the ladies said, you know, my 8,000 dropped down to 2000. And I'm like, well, you're looking at the value but mm -hmm. you still have your cryptocurrency. So if you hold on, it's very possible, dare I say likely, that will pass your 8,000 that you initially put in and be worth exponentially more, depending on what you invested in. So yeah, yeah, yeah. great reminder. Don't worry about the value dropping because you still have your holdings. Excellent reminder. Um, there was something else I wanted to mention. Oh, and also with the market, I, I think, you know, especially people who aren't really in the space paying attention to what's going on and they're just kind of hearing more mainstream media news. What they're not telling people is how major companies, corporations, associations, institutions, they are acquiring more and more crypto. Yes. So these are the major financial players. Believe me, they know what they're doing. So yes. we want to do what they do, not what the media says. Yes. So don't get distracted by the media. <laughs> yeah, don't get distracted. And, and it's so easy because there's so much coming at you and you're hearing all these things. That it's like uh, everything is kind of like a fire alarm. Like it's sounding yeah. a fire alarm. Every time something happens, oh, right. it went down 3%. 3%. <laughs> <laughs> like wait 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 right. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know like oh today right like it's you the know, end of so the world just, you know yeah <laughs> they do the same <laughs> thing with you know crypto scams like we don't have cash scams you know there's right. scams in everything mm -hmm. but yeah, they yeah. certainly sensationalize the crypto scams like it's just so new and unique I'm like y'all you know this is something we've been dealing with throughout the history of man Yes. So let's not focus on the scams, focus on how to protect yourself and your yes. assets so that you don't yes. get scammed. Okay, yes. because there's always going to be scammers and there's always going to be um, careless people who allow themselves to be scammed. So you yes. just have to focus on you and what you're doing. It's just have to put that out there real quick. Yes, yes. I mean, that's a great way to end because that's a big deal mm -hmm. too right now, right? Is security and, mm -hmm. and making sure that folks know how to secure it. Like you say, you want to protect yourself, but just know like, even with fiat, there's there's scams all the time. There's bad things happening with that money too, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that currency. So, you know, it's it's just about being safe. Just like you protect Absolutely. yourself with your fiat, you protect yourself with your 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 cryptocurrency. And, right. Yeah. That's taking practice. yes, and taking ownership of that. That is so important. Being ready, yeah. ready to accept and realize you are taking care of your own assets, and that's something new for most of us because we're accustomed to delegating that to other people, but now it's on us. So just realize that when you're getting into crypto, you're in control. You're on your own. <laughs> you're in control. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's part of it. Exactly. That's the best part of it. That's the same that's thing the I say part. when I look at those three cents interest and adding on my Steve and my bank <laughs> Yeah, it's like, how long is this? Like, what's going on here? It's like, you all shouldn't have wasted the stamp to send this, right? Especially, like, let's just talk about the gas, like fuel. Like, really? Like, can I at least get that? Right. <laughs> at least, at least, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, Dr. Tammy, this was wonderful. Thank you so much for your insight. Thank you for sharing what you're doing. And we are so proud of and happy to see someone from our community representing us so beautifully. So thank you for that. Thank you so much for having me. This has been a blast. I appreciate you. Awesome. So we will definitely be in touch and I will talk to you soon. You have a great rest of the day. You too. Thank you. Thank you again, Dr. Tammy, for that wonderful information, for sharing insight into the crypto and blockchain space, why we should be involved, why everyone should be involved, especially getting an understanding of NFTs and the metaverse being something that we should not be intimidated by, but really strive to focus on. Again, this episode is brought to you by the Crypto Confidence Collection, and we are so glad to have you tune in to the Crypto Confident Podcast for grown women. We'll see you next time.
And remember, be cautious, but don't be afraid.